crew brings in the lightsabers. Wouldn't be surprised to see some fire here. There he is, the giant slayer, Lee Song Su on screen. Shake hands attacker, 26 years old, world ranked number 20, and there he is in person. And there's the fire. We'll see a lot more of it on the table. Lee Song Su playing incredibly well to beat not only Zhang Jiko, but the player that Zhang Jiko beat in the World Championships in 2015, Vladimir Samsonov. So Lee Song Su in top form, Vladi, Zhang Jiko. Who else? Cho Sung Min from Korea, up and coming player, and Darko Jorgic from Slovenia early on. The big backhand, the big Slovenian backhand. And now the number two pen holder in the world, the top player from Hong Kong at 25 years old. He's world ranked number seven. He's fast, he's strong and consistent. He's Wang Chun Ting. Now Wang Chun Ting in the last round beat Jung Sang Un, the player who beat Ma Long just recently at the Asian Championships, three games to one. Before that, Wang Chun Ting beat Matthias Carlsen four games to three. Matthias playing very well over the last few years, has been making his way up to the top, right near the top anyway, of the world rankings for Sweden alongside Christian Carlsen. Before that, Wang Chun Ting had a very difficult match against Omar Asar of Egypt, Egypt's top player. It was a 4-2 victory, and in the opening round, Alexei Livinsov, who's had an incredible year in the French League, going 17-9, playing a very close match, a four to three victory for Wang Chun Ting over Livinsov of Russia. But now we will see two players who've had incredibly strong tournaments. It's gonna end here for one of them, Jill. Yes, uh, who's going to win? Um, but Wang beat Lee at the 2016 World Cup in the quarterfinal. So whether he'll get his revenge or whether he'll, he'll win again, we're yet to see. Right, and as you know, the World Cup happens quite late in the year, so if that is their last encounter, either way, it's recent enough to be very telling. And there's Kim tak Su, legend of table tennis, Olympic medalist from 1992. Had a chance to see him celebrating with Lee song Su as he rubbed his head over and over after beating Zhang Jika in their celebrations. Now, Wang Chun Ting started table tennis a bit late on the professional level. He was playing high school, just playing, you know, tournament player, and he played a match that he lost against one of the national team players. And the coach of the national team player came over, sort of recruited Wang Chun Ting. He said, what are you doing here, man? You should be part of our program. Why aren't you training seriously? Come join us. So even though they beat him, they asked him to join. And since then, he's improved rapidly. Now, last World Championships, it was the round of 16 that Lee Song Su lost. So he's already one step farther in the tournament, or one step further, I should say. He's got explosive power on both sides, plays a very high-risk game. And while it's not outrageously consistent, it sure has been here at this tournament, Jill. Well, yes, I mean, he's always looking to get in with his forehand, as, as both players will be looking to do. But it's interesting, um, Wong, one of two players in the top 10 that plays with a pen, hand, uh, pen hold grip. So, but he does use the backhand side as well. Right, in the modern game, as China discovered in the 90s, I heard there was a meeting. And speaking of China, there's Lu Guoliang's brother, Lu Guodong, head coach for Hong Kong. He's coached all over the world. Now, there was a meeting in China about banning, essentially banning the penhold grip because of Sweden's dominance over it and how one-sided it was. And then Lu Guoliang innovated the reverse pen. Now, Wang Chun Ting, yes, he's the number two pen holder in the world, but from a backhand standpoint, for me, he's the number one reverse pen hold backhander. I mean, Xu Xin has some incredible power on his backhand, but from a consistency and a reliability standpoint, Wang Chun Ting is so comfortable. Last time I saw him rally with Fan Zhendong in a match, he was just on fire in the backhand game off the table. He's very fast in his footwork, and he's got some tape on his left leg, and he's got the uh, Wang Hao brace under the knee, on the left knee as well. And he's even wearing some biking shorts underneath the uh, table tennis shorts. I mean, this is a lot of physical support right now. 
that I don't normally see from Wang Jun Ting. No, but I mean, he, he seemed he, when he played uh, yesterday, his previous match, it didn't seem to affect him at all. So I'm sure he'll be giving 100 percent no matter how much tape he's got on his leg or arm or whatever. Right, and maybe it is a helping factor out here for him. Now, both players, you mentioned they both are going to try to get in with their forehand, absolutely. But they both have very strong backhands as well. I would say exceptional backhands for players in the top 20 in the world. Beautiful That's a hooking. good start there. Right, and a bit of side spin on it as well from Lee Song Su to send it out of reach. Wang Chunting is comfortable off the table, but he's really going to have to try and stay in closer because, as we saw yesterday with Vladi, Lee Song Su's too dangerous when he has time. Even on some of the softer spinny balls, the initiation is going to have to be there. It's going to have to be a dart of a shot, a bullet from Wang Chun Ting. He had his serve for both of those points and couldn't convert either of them. Lee Song Su breaking serve. Nice change of pace. Fast, long serve, slightly softer third ball attack. Sometimes unusual when you see the first serve that they've done to be a fast one. Normally they, they, it's, uh, it's short or half long. Yeah, that's right. I heard uh, Jean-Mi say 80% of the serves half long at this level. Again, that hooking forehand creating the angles. Now, because Lee Song Su is taking the ball much earlier than Wang Chun Ting, he's able to control the angles better. He's got wider options, and he's using them wisely. Not a point dropped yet for the Korean player. On the receive now. That's just too solid. Not a bad serve at all from Wang Chun Ting. Light oh, that spin. Was fantastic, wasn't it? Touch play there, really a hot, strong flick. this stage any loose ball there they're in and once again the touch we've talked about the over the table from the flip now on the receive he's able to keep it short to the forehand Wang Chun Ting is going to have to find some new strategies here in his receive game and mix it up I think a bit in his serve as well maybe a fast long serve from time to time from Wang Chun Ting right onto the elbow maybe into the body on the backhand side There we good go. Placement. He's off the scoreboard. That was good placement into the into the body by Wong. To be fair, he's trying all sorts, but nothing seems to be working for him as yet. And now this is going to be, you know, the game's not over yet, but he will have a minute to talk between games with the coach. And Lu Guodong is probably collecting a lot of ideas right now for how to back Lee Song Su off the table. And that's going to go down as an unforced error. Wang Chun Ting with a mid speed ball to his forehand. He makes that shot 90% of the time, maybe more. Now, we were talking about Fan Zhendong's sweet spot and sort of the fact that he can reach the ball very well and still hit a powerful shot. Wang Chun Ting, much bigger than most on the backhand side, is able to counter confidently as well. Yeah, he's, he's very confident with his backhand. As you said earlier, he's equally good with his backhand and forehand. Now, I normally know him to be incredibly fast, which is why he's often so comfortable off the table. It looks like there's something he doesn't trust right now in his right leg. I could be wrong completely, but the movement there was oddly not typical of Wang Chun Ting. Beautiful counter. Again, that sweet spot on the backhand side is big, and he lunges out and punches it back. Wow, what a recovery, spilling it out on the table. Love to see a replay of that. He had to get so far in on the forehand side to reach that ball as it bit the net. 
He picked that up well. He obviously read it. Get in. Oh, and you can see it just bounce off to the side. Oh, and this time the break goes the way of Wang Chun Ting. He got the point before on the recovery. Big point to stop the momentum. I remember 9-3 on the scoreboard. And now it's four game points for Lee Song Su to take the first in this best of seven quarterfinal match. I like Lee Song Su's, I'd say, presence out there right now. Very positive attitude when he missed that shot. Wasn't a lot of frustration. Well, you've got to forget those points and think about the next one. And the next one it was, 11 to 7. Lee Song Su takes the first game. Wang Chun Ting trailing, and we'll be back for game two right after this. And as the players come back to the table for game two, we had a chance to see which part of the table they're using the most. And what it looked like was Wang Chun Ting tends to be playing the deep center of the table for Lee Song Su. And the other way around is going wide to the wings and short to the center of the table on Wang Chun Ting's side from Lee Song Su. You would have thought, though, with playing to the middle, then he could play either wing. It's difficult. Do you, you think he would play a bit more onto the wing as opposed to just playing here? Right. Typically, that is the setup. Play to the middle and then open up the wings, get someone off balance, turning around. Nice, confident counter from Wang Chun Ting and a bit of fire there as well. The Cho Lei coming out. Like to see the passion and the high energy play. And that's something we lacked in game one. In some matches, people come out right away, Tomokazu Harimoto. Every point could be the last point. And you do play every point, right? You play to win every point. You focus on that one specifically, and then your job is done, and you have a new job of getting the next point. So solid over the table with that forehand flip kill. Just popped up just a little bit there, and he stepped in. Made that winner. Anything loose, either player will be looking to punish it. And punished it was. Forehand flip comes off the table, but well anticipated. Lee Song Su with the fast footwork. I think that's one of the key ingredients as well, that not only does he have the strength and the wrist speed, but his feet get him to the ball so quickly, he's not, he doesn't have to leave early. He covers his ground very well. Smart combination right into the body, gets Wang Chun Ting standing upright to turn the corner and plays it right off the bounce the opposite way. That's how quick he played that ball, right off the bounce. Great angle as well. Seventy-four kilometers per hour. I heard uh, yesterday there was one at 114. I heard that as well, and I'm skeptical. That was by Timo Boll, right. apparently. We saw it on screen that he had hit an 83 kilometer per hour shot as well, but if 
I mean, 114 would just put everything else to shame we've seen this tournament. Beautiful backhand down the line. That's the backhand that's been missing from this match. An unpredictable backhand parallel. Now, when we think about reverse pen hold backhands, the player who was most famous for it, of course, Wang Hao, who's here as a coach for Fang Zhendong and others, he could go anywhere on the table with that backhand and from even deep off the table hit a winner. Wang Chunting is the closest I've seen to that. That was the first shot to demonstrate it. Backhand again, hit short touch play. Played that backhand down the line. You know, it's interesting how players have different spirits when they're here at the tournaments. Ma Long and some of the top Chinese players have their headphones on, stay very focused, and they don't want to socialize with anybody during the tournament. Lee Song Su, I saw in the practice hall before his match with Vladi, and he was just like, hey, what's up? And came over, big high five. It was just, I don't know, seems very relaxed and comfortable. Wang Chunting, similarly. But then when they get to the match situation, it's love all, then they both got their head Head gear on. Right, it's all business once the match starts, even before. I ask a lot of the players I'm interested what's going through their head during the two minute warm up. And despite that shot going wide, what are you thinking? I was just saying, I think they're visu visualizing how they're going to win points and play points against, they know their tactics against their opponent. But I think if you're visualizing, you're winning a point either from serve, third ball. So they've got that a positive vibe in their, in their head. And well, that's probably the case as well. The most common thing I heard was getting into rhythm, relaxing, shaking off the nerves. Even some of the best players in the world I talked to said, nervous. We're just, <laughs> I'm nervous trying to be calm and cool. Yeah, but I think you've got to have a little bit of nerves in your, in your, in your tummy to get the uh, adrenaline going. That's I think right. If you're too relaxed, then maybe you're not pumped up to play. So right. it's getting that right balance. If nervousness is just energy, you have two choices for how it can affect you, right? You can let it pump you up and make you excited, or you could also make it a fear thing and become hesitant or concerned. Tighten up. Speaking of which, two points for Lee Song Su after being down 4-9. That's a very difficult ball. Tries to play the short side of the table at full extension with the forehand reach without leaving the table too much. Ooh, and a service error. Heavy side spin makes it right off the side of the net. Three game points for Wang Chun Ting. You don't see that very often, do you? There's that flip again, placement down the line. Now at the third tile break of the game, I've watched Wang Chunting play a lot over the years, and as I mentioned, the, the undershorts, the biking shorts, and also an undershirt. I don't know if he's feeling a little cold or what the deal is, but it's not too many players we see wearing undershirts while playing, and I can't recall seeing Wang Chunting do it. Lee Song Su saves one more from 4 9 to back 9 10. I mean, Jill, this morning, Xu Xin came back against five match points for Ling Gao Yuan and won the match. I mean, it was devastating for Ling Gao Yuan and just amazing for Xu Xin. We've got a timeout in game number two. This is a very early timeout, but an important one. Lu Guodong using his experience saying, look, we need to capture this. Can't afford to be down 0-2 and let Lee Song Su play freely for the rest of this match. So what do you think the conversation is right now in the Hong Kong corner, Jill? Well, it's, it's sort of a game, it's up and down the game. I mean, he comes out with some incredible shots and then 
some silly errors, you know, basic little things. So I don't know if all is hunky dory in the in the corner with his. Uh, he's got a very heavy bandage on his leg. Yeah, and we saw early on that the way he was moving around was just uh, brought up some concern either way. You can see that most of the serves there have been played short. Wang Chun-Ting trying to play middle of the table forehand. Now, in general, from a pen and hold serve, maybe this is just me reading the statistic wrong, but more typically middle of the table backhand from the pendulum serve. One more game point for Wang Chun-Ting. And the flip goes long. He just looks a little bit slow to come in. I'm really curious to get word on if there are injuries. But a big point, Lee Song Su from down 4-9. Again, he's up one game to zero. There wouldn't have been a timeout called if this wasn't a crucial point in the match. He did seem very tentative as he went in to take that, that flick. Excellent counter, a little bit of side spin on it as well, and you can hear him. Three big Cholets trying to keep himself pumped up. He can still take this game. He's got another game point. We say that about his movement, and then he comes and plays a, a rally like that, playing backhand and forehand, so he's, he's able to move around the table okay, whether it's that movement into the table short. And he takes the game. For me, that was actually a more impressive physical movement point than the one before. The one before, he hung into the rally and waited for the opportunity, got the upper body out of the way. But here, early on, initiates, and the effort pays off. And it's a big game there. 12-10 for Wang Chun-Ting to tie it up against Lee song Su. We'll be back for game three right after this. Back for game number three, Wang Chun Ting by the skin of his teeth pulls it out. Now we're seeing faster movement. We're seeing more aggressive shots in the counters, a little bit more explosive energy from Wang Chun Ting. Trying to play to the short side of the table off the hooking side spin. Just missing the edge. He's covering the ground better, though. He gets to the wide forehand. So it's not the first time we've seen Lee Song Su take the first two points against serve. And that's a tough shot. Yeah. I mean, from in front of the body with the pen hold grip, using sort of that outside receive action we see for a strawberry just keeps him falling away from the table. Not enough ground, I guess too much ground to cover, I should say. Well, he left it open there as well, wide on the forehand. Nice. nice off the bounce there. Yeah, he really kept his weight forward, took it earlier. Now, you were mentioning earlier that we were trying to surmise a little bit what might be happening physically, but Jill, you said that Wang Chun-Ting has just been a little bit slow to come in over the table for some of these. Yes, yeah, so he, he appears to be a bit tentative, but he's moving well side to side. But, I mean, we're just surmising here. Well, those are fair. I mean, those we see, right? We just, I guess we're surmising any possible injury or something 
who knows what's really happening, but we have observed what you just said. Very fired up Lee Song Su does not want to get that close to winning and not take the game like he did last. So with the first towel break, firepower from Lee Song Su and Wang Chun Ting trying to find his. But again, positioning and in over the table, such a huge factor. The first two shots of the rally are by far the most important. Puts a long one in there. Just keeps one guessing. It's good to have variation on service. Not only speed, but spin, direction. Well anticipated, and quite honestly, while he was keeping Wang Chunting guessing, the point before he guessed right, he turned quickly. Maybe it's not even guess, he just simply moved quickly, got around, but made the adjustment on the second one to get a little bit more lift on a fast, relatively dead serve. I can't recall so many backhands that have won points for Wang Chunting. He had the down-the-line shot earlier in game two, I think. But it's it's really a key ingredient for him, and he's just the rhythm. He hasn't found it yet against Lee Song Su's pace. This time he's in over the table for the forehand flip kill. Yeah, good third ball there. And set up nicely, going short to the forehand side, getting a little bit of a late response from Lee Song Su. This is the power, and this is the Wang Jun Wang Chun Ting that I know, aggressive and confident near the table. There was a good angle on the on the forehand side, and then next one straight into the middle. Deceptive underspin on the pendulum serve. Lee Song Su's serves have been very effective as well the last few matches I've seen from him. I don't think of him as a player. When I think Lee Song Su, I think big backhands, I think flip kills, and I think counter loops on the run. I think cannon from both sides, but inconsistent. Nice placement, the high ball, Wang Chunting waiting to see which side Lee Song Su favors and then play into the body. Yeah, service popped up there. And he followed in. <coughs> so now just a two point game, 6 8. Lee Song Su hanging on to the lead. He's played a lot of high-risk shots in rally and also on serve from the, the two in a row deep to the backhand corner, just keeping Wang Chunting guessing, being unpredictable. But that one, the, the amount of reaction time, it was so fast for Wang Chunting to move over to the forehand, step around and try to get that banana receive. It looked like there was a bit of a guess that worked out in his favor. Be disappointed with that one. Not really put under a lot of pressure there. Four game points for Lee Song Su. And the comeback starts one point at a time. Wang Chun Ting saving one game point. Now this is one of my favorite things. I've had a chance to face the backhand of Wang Chun Ting and he manages to get some side spin on it naturally so it hooks deeper into the backhand corner of his opponent. And there we could see it very effectively trailing off, leaving an uncomfortable ball for Lee Song Su. This is his second game point saved and now two game points left for Lee Song Su, but he does have the advantage of service on his side.
Little break off the top of the net brings Wang Chun Ting into the table and Lee Song Su takes advantage deep to the backhand corner. It's a two to one lead for the Korean Lee Song Su and we'll be back right after this with game four. Back for game number four. Lee Song Su in control right now, up two games to one. And really almost coming back to steal game number two as well. Wang Chun Ting has a lot of pressure, and I think he's gonna have to figure out how he can how he can get that aggressive backhand into play early. Serve receive has been real trouble. Credit to Lee Song Su for the variation. That's the best point I've seen yet, and Lee Song Su pulls it out. You know, backhand early on, the counter loops from off the table. Spanish Open 2015 is where I saw Wang Chun Ting really shine, and he can run around so well, consistently looping. Where did that come from? Look at this placement, redirection over the table, going the opposite way into the backhand corner this time. Yeah, that was a good good one straight down the line. Service following. I feel like we've seen the forehand flip kill from Lee Song Su cross court wide to the forehand. But if he keeps Wang Chun Ting guessing like that, it's going to be really tough for the Hong Kong player to get in the point. Breaking the pattern once again. He's testing him shorter to the forehand side, or more to the forehand side, I should say. Second serve here for Wang Chun Ting. He's, it feels like he's testing out different parts of the table. I wouldn't be surprised to see a long serve to the backhand, but where he's standing, it's tough. Lee Sang Su's stance, he's turned the corner almost like Yu Sung Min, like a J Pen player who really wants that forehand. Lee Sang Su makes it almost impossible to serve long to his backhand. Top of the net it seemed, but two rocket backhands confidently from Lee Song Su. A good placement. Middle backhand. Trying to keep him guessing. Not sure if there was a service. There was a service warning here. The arc of the ball. The ball needs to be tossed nearly vertical. The warning was the ball had been tossed backwards into the body. And a little bit less so here, but immediately Lee Song Su's serve gets away from him. This is common, when you get a service warning, suddenly your focus changes, you're trying to avoid the call, make sure that you don't get a point faulted, but the quality of serve often suffers a little bit as a result. Yeah, because I think you, you're thinking about it more as opposed to just doing it automatically. Right. Smart play, Wang Chun Ting with a high ball, watches his opponent and takes his time to play it down the line into the backhand. Just a one point game here, 80 kilometer per hour shot. Outstanding point right at the baseline for the second to last. And Lee Song Su tested all over. Wang Chun Ting, you can see both of the wings there, and he still tries to turn the corner, does it successfully. The fishing game. The bounce right at the back. And finally, a counter backhand that misses. 
See the vein right next to the eyebrow. Look how big that bulging vein was. Lee Song Su just pumping. The head gets really hot for some of these points. That's the best rally we've had so far in this match. Oh, yeah. Fired up again nonstop. He's on his way to 3-1 if he keeps up this performance. You know, when we think about the fire for Wang Chun Ting, he just hasn't had a lot of opportunities to celebrate. He's won three points this game, and this has been the trend with the exception of game two. Well placed. You know, we, we talk about positioning. I was talking earlier about how Lee Song Su receives from around the corner. It feels like he's just so fast on his feet, it doesn't leave you a lot of options on the table. With Wang Chun Ting from where he stands, and he's typically very fast, it seems a little bit slower today than usual, but that could just be in comparison to Lee Song Su. There it is, aggressive opening. He gets a soft ball from Lee Song Su, forces him into a little bit of submission and backs him off the table. Tries to do forehand flick. That one gets away from him. Sometimes when the ball's not there, the shot isn't sitting high enough and you've already committed to the shot, it's difficult to improvise and change because if you hit a lukewarm shot, your opponent's going to crush it. I think, he, you know, under pressure, he still feels as though he's got to do something. Difficult ball to the short side where the net appears taller, blocks a greater percentage of the table. And the depth of that receive is solid too. It's right near the back of the table. Lee Song Su has just a few options on that ball. Oh, he reads that well. Saw that one coming, that long serve. You know, we saw that two times in a row, the long serve to the backhand, but I think in the last combination they were both wider to the backhand. This one a little bit more on the body, which allowed Wang Chun Ting a better angle on the way back. Man, is he on fire. You know, we also talk, it's still, this match is very much the match. But you think, you start to think about could Lee Sung Su, if he takes this match, beat some of the top players in the world, the top Chinese players? And the answer is yes, he could. Man, that's the most animated celebration I've seen from Lee Sung Su. Kim Tak Su on his feet, and there's still some clear communication there. You saw the hands of Kim Tak Su. That was not just clapping, that was a conversation with this player. Now, since October 1st of 2016, coaches have been allowed to coach in between points. So Kim Tak Su using it well. One game point saved. Three left for Lee Song Su. And just to clarify, the fact that Lee Song Su could beat the top Chinese players in the world doesn't mean the odds are in his favor, simply that he's capable in ways that maybe other players aren't so capable. For example, he beat Ma Long in 2012, one of the last three foreigners to beat Ma Long in the tournament. And the wide serve to the backhand. It's a tempting ball, and Wang Chunting tries the short side of the table, but no luck. 11 to 7, and it's a 3 to 1 lead for Lee Song Su of Korea. Stick around, game five coming up right after this.
And as we come back for game number five, looking at the statistics, it became quite clear that Lee Song Su is taking much better advantage of his serve, really not leaving a lot of options for Wang Chun Ting to get in the points. And if Wang Chun Ting has to gamble in the sense that he's going to hope he takes some rallies mid rally, he just has to get in earlier with the point and set himself up. Precision in the half long serve, maybe another touch shot after the flip game. But I think he's, he's tried, he's been trying that in the other games, but it's not been successful as he has been in the past. Right, I guess this is what uh, table tennis engineers have to do. And by table tennis engineers, I mean all the professionals are constantly looking for solutions. Just amazing how fast Lee Song Su can get that full arm stroke from over the table. The racket speed he just generates so much spin and power early in the point before Wang Chun Ting is back far enough to really feel comfortable keeping it in play, and the percentages of countering it are quite low. Smart play, very patient, soft hands near the table and waiting for the opening. Has he opened up well into the body? which is always difficult. Opponent's got to decide whether to play a backhand or a forehand. Now again, the stance, because Wang Chun Ting is looking to come in and take the banana with the backhand on the forehand side of the table. It leaves open the possibility for that deep serve to the very corner of the backhand side of the table. Well placed. Dangling off the back edge, not a lot of comfort room for Lee Song Su. It almost sounded like a second bounce at the back of the table there. Not sure what I heard, but very impressive touch and knowledge of space, I'd say, for Lee Song Su. Well, I think he picked that up well, didn't he? Because it's always difficult whether it's going to be long enough to attack or you have to come in and either flick it or push it. Right. Now remember, Lee Song Su has been nicknamed the Giant Slayer this tournament. And for the past few years and even since 2012, there's a good reason for it. Beautifully right into the body. Again, lets the wrist drag back a little bit behind where the elbow is to redirect the ball and play it into the body. It happened quite fast, but that long arm stroke really helped him take it a little bit more to the middle of the table. Heavy tops been kicking deep off the back of the table. You know, Korea has a rich history of taking titles they're the only non-Chinese country to win gold medals, plural, in men's singles. You had Waldner from Sweden, and then you had Yu Sung Min and Yu Nam Gyu. Surprise again, Wang Chun Ting starting to go the other way, and Lee Song Su with the inside out forehand over the table, the windshield wiper, little side swipe action. I bring up the history of Korea thinking we still have a ways to go, but quarterfinals, this is our first quarterfinal, so. Yep, this is first quarterfinal. And the way things are going right now, he's about to be one of the final four men in this tournament. We'll see if he could be the next Korean to end up on top of the world. Remember, Ju Se-hyuk played in 2003 in the final against Werner Schlager. That long serve to the backhand is consistently paid off for Lee Song Su. He mixes it up just enough to keep Wang Chun Ting guessing, but he's using it more frequently than probably anyone I've seen at the professional level, anyway. Well, that's good serving, isn't it? Uh, deception. That's the name of the game. Wow, and this time, even with Wang Chun Ting trying to get around it, Lee Song Su so fast and so deep to the corner. I mean, we look at average service speed as a statistic, and almost consistently, they're very close between the players because 80% of the serves are half long and not about speed. But I would guess 
Lee Song Su's service speed has gone way up in this game. Nice after motion on the serve, but it's no problem. And Lee Song Su looking up at the ceiling. His head is back. He's one point away. He's got seven match points from moving on to the semifinal. Remember, this tournament had five top Chinese players in it. To be one of the final four players in the tournament would be huge. But not yet one match point saved by Wang Chunting. Nice touch from Wang Chunting right at the back of the table. Lee Song Su, we're going to see a timeout. And we will. Now, this is a wise timeout. It's a bit safe. It's early enough. He's lost two points in a row after being on fire. And you could see that it got to his spirit. I mean, he was chowing and shouting. It's tough to do that when you're not winning points. But the way he lost the last two points, you're concerned if you're Kim Tak Su in the corner that the head's down, that he's losing a bit of focus, maybe a little bit of confidence is lost. Time to pep talk the player. Yeah, and at that last shot he, he went for, I think he was trying to finish off. Yeah, that's to be 4-1, four, 4-1 one. Four, one and game over, prepare for the next game, but you've got to get to 11. Right, that's right, you've got to or make maybe, the last. Or maybe it could be 12-10. Wow, knows? well we saw it from this score earlier on with Xu Xin and Lin Gao Yuan. But that's right, you have to take the last step, you have to actually cross the finish line. And sometimes it's easy to think when you get a really big lead like this, okay, just put it away. But it's a change in mentality. Talking to Lily Jong during her Ask a Pro Anything, she said, I tell myself in tight moments, 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah! And there it is. 0-0 zero, zero becomes four games to one and a head back in the air. Once again, satisfaction in the Korean corner. The Giant Slayer slaying another giant to add to his collection. World rank number seven, Wong Chun Ting, the number two pen holder and the best pen hold backhand in the world has been knocked out of contention here at the World Championships. Lee Song Su with the handshake to the umpires in an incredible performance, only dropping one game to world rank number seven, Jill. No, fantastic game. I'm sure Lee Sang Su will be pleased with that. He's celebrating with his coach. Look at that. It looks like he wants to kiss him. You can see it. They were rubbing. I mean, there's so much celebration and so much camaraderie there between these two. This is the second time after beating Zhang Jiku, the celebration, the hug was huge and the head rub, but the respect that they have for each other. You know, Kim Tak Su, of course, a legendary player himself, knows the player as well. But as a coach, you really live with your player. Their success is your success and their failures you take to heart and you go back and do your homework. So again, Lee Song Su bringing the team of Kim Tak Su and Lee Song Su, amazing glory here. And no question about it with the Shawshank pose, Lee Song Su is in seventh heaven right now. Getting ready for the men's single semifinal. What a performance. We've got Johnny Cowan down on the court. Look like they're going to be doing a little interview. We'll have a chance to hear from the winner. Stick around. You're watching the Liebherr World Table Tennis Championships live from Dusseldorf. Interview coming up. final action, fatal finale here in Dusseldorf. Amazing performance by this man, Lee sang Su from the Republic of Korea! <laughs> sang Su, you, you are playing very well here in Dusseldorf. You've beaten Jan ji Vladimir Samsonov, and now you're winning Won Chun Ting. You're playing very well. Uh, yeah, uh, I 
I'm so very happy and today competitions to my best condition. And so that's why you're playing so well. So you're very happy with your play. Yeah, very happy. Now semi-finals first time and to many, many happy. Fantastic semi-final half final then spielst du zum next. Also and now between Kokiniwa and Fan Jandong. So you play the winner. Do you have a choice maybe? Kokiniwa or Fan Jandong? I don't know. Uh, who wins? I don't know. And well, Fan Jandong wins and Niwa wins and I tomorrow see this one match and one one point and focus. So you're gonna focus one point one at a time. Fantastic. Good approach. Ladies and gentlemen, a dominant hair and Lee Zantu. Fantastic performance into the semi-final. Crew brings in the lightsabers. Wouldn't be surprised to see some fire here. There he is. The Giant Slayer, Lee Song Su on screen. Shake hands attacker, 26 years old. World rank number 20, and there he is in person. And there's the fire. We'll see a lot more of it on the table. Lee Song Su playing incredibly well to beat not only Zhang Jiko, but the player that Zhang Jiko beat in the World Championships in 2015, Vladimir Samsonov. So Lee Song Su in top form, Vladi, Zhang Jiko. Who else? Cho Sung Min from Korea, up and coming player. And Darko Jorgic from Slovenia early on. The big backhand, the big Slovenian backhand. And now the number two pen holder in the world. The top player from Hong Kong at 25 years old. He's world ranked number seven. He's fast, he's strong and consistent. He's Wang Chun Ting. Now Wang Chun Ting in the last round beat Jung Sang Un, the player who beat Ma Long just recently at the Asian Championships, three games to one. Before that, Wang Chun Ting beat Matthias Carlsen four games to three. Matthias playing very well over the last few years, has been making his way up to the top, right near the top anyway, of the world rankings for Sweden alongside Christian Carlsen. Before that, Wang Chun Ting had a very difficult match against Omar Asar of Egypt, Egypt's top player. It was a 4-2 victory, and in the opening round, Alexei Livinsov, who's had an incredible year in the French League, going 17-9, playing a very close match, a 4-3 victory for Wang Chun Ting over Livinsov of Russia. But now we will see two players who've had incredibly strong tournaments. It's going to end here for one of them, Jill. Yes, uh, who's going to win? Um, but Wong beat Lee at the 2016 World Cup in the quarterfinal. So whether he'll get his revenge or whether he'll, he'll win again, we're yet to see. Right, and as you know, the World Cup happens quite late in the year. So if that is their last encounter, either way, it's recent enough to be very telling. And there's Kim tak a legend of table tennis, Olympic medalist from 1992. Had a chance to see him celebrating with Lee Song Su as he rubbed his head over and over after beating Zhang Jika in their celebrations. Now, Wang Chun Ting started table tennis a bit late on the professional level. He was playing high school, just playing, you know, tournament player, and he played a match that he lost against one of the national team players. And the coach of the national team player came over, sort of recruited Wang Chun Ting. He said, What are you doing here, man? should be part of our program. Why aren't you training seriously? Come join us. So even though they beat him, they asked him to join. And since then, he's improved rapidly. Now, last World Championships, it was the round of 16 that Lee Song Su lost. So he's already one step farther in the tournament, or one step further, I should say. He's got explosive power on both sides, plays a very high-risk game. And while it's not outrageously consistent, it sure has been here at this tournament, Jill. Oh yes, I mean, he's always looking to get in with his forehand, as, as both players will be looking to do. But it's interesting, um, Wong, one of two players in the top ten. Beautiful backhand down the line. That's the backhand that's been missing from this match. An unpredictable backhand parallel. Now, when we think about reverse pen hold backhands, the player who was most famous for it, of course, Wong Hao, who's here as a coach for Fan Zhendong and others, 
He could go anywhere on the table with that backhand and from even deep off the table hit a winner. Wang Chun Ting is the closest I've seen to that. That was the first shot to demonstrate it. Backhand again, hit short touch play. Played that backhand down the line. You know, it's interesting how players have different spirits when they're here at the tournaments. Ma Long and some of the top Chinese players have their headphones on, stay very focused, and they don't want to socialize with anybody during the tournament. Lee Song Su, I saw in the practice hall before his match with Vladi, and he was just like, hey, what's up, and came over, big high five. It was just, I don't know, seems very relaxed and comfortable. Wang Chun Ting similarly. But then when they get to the match situation, it's love all, then they've both got their head, head gear on. Right, it's all business once the match starts, even before. I ask a lot of the players I'm interested what's going through their head during the two-minute warm-up. And despite that shot going wide, what are you thinking? I was just saying, I think they're visu visualizing how they're going to win points and play points against, they know their tactics against their opponent. But I think if you're visualizing, you're winning a point either from serve, third ball. So they've got that uh, positive vibe in their, in their head. And well, that's probably the case as well. The most common thing I heard was getting into rhythm, relaxing, shaking off the nerves. Even some of the best players in the world I talked to said, nervous. We're just, <laughs> I'm nervous trying to be calm and cool. Yeah, but I think you've got to have a little bit of nerves in your, in your, in your tummy to get the uh, adrenaline going. That's so right. If you're too relaxed, then maybe you're not pumped up to play. So right. it's getting that right balance. If nervousness is just energy, you have two choices for how it can affect you, right? You can let it pump you up and make you excited, or you could also make it a fear thing and become hesitant or concerned, tighten up. Speaking of which, two points for Lee Song Su after being down 4-9. That's a very difficult ball. Tries to play the short side of the table at full extension with the forehand reach without leaving the table too much. Ooh, and a service error. Heavy side spin makes it right off the side of the net. Three game points for Wang Chun Ting. You don't see that very often, do you? There's that flip again, placement down the line. Now at the third tile break of the game, I've watched Wang Chun Ting play a lot over the years, and as I mentioned, the, the undershorts, the biking shorts, and also an undershirt. I don't know if he's feeling a little cold or what the deal is, and mix it up, I think, a bit in his serve as well. Maybe a fast, long serve from time to time from Wang Chun Ting, right onto the elbow, maybe into the body on the backhand side. There we good go. Placement. He's off the scoreboard. That was good placement into the, into the body by Wong. To be fair, he's trying all sorts, but nothing seems to be working for him as yet. And now this is going to be, you know, the game's not over yet, but he will have a minute to talk between games with the coach. And Lu Guodong is probably collecting a lot of ideas right now for how to back Lee Song Su off the table. And that's going to go down as an unforced error. Wang Chun Ting with a mid speed ball to his forehand. He makes that shot 90% of the time, maybe more. Now, we were talking about Fan Zhendong's sweet spot and sort of the fact that he can reach the ball very well and still hit a powerful shot. Wang Chun Ting, much bigger than most on the backhand side, is able to counter confidently as well. Yeah, he's, he's very confident with his backhand. 
as you said earlier, he's equally good with his backhand and forehand. Now, I normally know him to be incredibly fast, which is why he's often so comfortable off the table. It looks like there's something he doesn't trust right now in his right leg. I could be wrong completely, but the movement there was oddly not typical of Wang Chun Ting. Beautiful counter. Again, that sweet spot on the backhand side is big, and he lunges out and punches it back. Wow, what a recovery, spilling it out on the table. Love to see a replay of that. He had to get so far in on the forehand side to reach that ball as it bit the net. He picked that up well. He obviously read it. Get in. Oh, and you can see it just bounce off to the side. Oh, and this time the break goes the way of Wang Chun Ting. He got the point before on the recovery. Big point to stop the momentum. I remember 9-3 on the scoreboard. And now it's four game points for Lee Song Su to take the first in this best of seven quarterfinal match. I like Lee Song Su's, I'd say, presence out there right now. Very positive attitude when he missed that shot. Wasn't a lot of frustration. Well, you've got to forget those points and think about the next one. And the next one it was, 11 to 7. Lee Song Su takes the first game. Wang Chun Ting trailing, and we'll be back for game two right after this. And as the players come back to the table for game two, we had a chance to see which part of the table they're using the most. And what it looked like was Wang Chun Ting tends to be playing the deep center of the table for Lee Song Su. And the other way around is going wide to the wings and short to the center of the table on Wang Chun Ting's side from Lee Song Su. You would have thought, though, with playing to the middle, then he could play either wing. It's difficult. You play. You think he would play a bit more onto the wing, as opposed to just playing here. Right. Typically, that is the setup: play to the middle and then open up the wings, get someone off balance, turning around. Nice, confident counter from Wang Chun Ting, and a bit of fire there as well. The Cho Lei coming out. Like to see the passion and the high energy play. And that's something we lacked in game one. In some matches, people come out right away, Tomokazu Harimoto. Every point could be the last point. And you do play every point, right? You play to win every point. You focus on that one specifically, and then your job is done, and you have a new job of getting the next point. So solid over the table with that forehand flip kill. Just popped up just a little bit there, and he stepped in. Made that winner. Anything loose, either player will be looking to punish it. And punished it was. Forehand flip comes off the table, but well anticipated. Lee Song Su with the fast footwork. 
I think that's one of the key ingredients as well, that not only does he have the strength and the wrist speed, but his feet get him to the ball so quickly, he's not, he doesn't have to leave early. He covers his ground very well. Smart combination right into the body, gets Wang Chunting standing upright to turn the corner and plays it right off the bounce the opposite way. It's how quick he played that ball, right off the bounce. Great angle as well. Seventy four kilometers per hour. I heard uh, yesterday there was one at one hundred and fourteen. I heard that as well, and I'm skeptical. That was by Timo Boll. Right. Apparently. We saw it on screen that he had hit an eighty three kilometer per hour shot as well. But if I mean one hundred fourteen would just put everything else to shame. We've seen this tournament. And that plays with a pen hand uh, pen hold grip. So, but he does use the backhand side as well. Right, in the modern game, as China discovered in the 90s, I heard there was a meeting. And speaking of China, there's Lu Guoliang's brother, Lu Guodong, head coach for Hong Kong. He's coached all over the world. Now, there was a meeting in China about banning, essentially banning the penhold grip because of Sweden's dominance over it and how one-sided it was. And then Lu Guoliang innovated the reverse pen. Now, Wang Chunting, yes, he's the number two pen holder in the world. But from a backhand standpoint, for me, he's the number one reverse pen hold backhander. I mean, Xu Xin has some incredible power on his backhand, but from a consistency and a reliability standpoint, Wang Chunting is so comfortable. Last time I saw him rally with Fan Zhendong in a match, he was just on fire in the backhand game off the table. He's very fast in his footwork, and he's got some tape on his left leg. And he's got the uh, Wang Hao brace under the knee, on the left knee as well. And he's even wearing some biking shorts underneath the uh, table tennis shorts. I mean, this is a lot of physical support right now that I don't normally see from Wang Chunting. No, but I mean, he, he seemed, he, when he played uh, yesterday, his previous match, it didn't seem to affect him at all. So I'm sure he'll be giving 100% no matter how much tape he's got on his leg or arm or whatever. Right, and maybe it is a helping factor out here for him. Now, both players, you mentioned they both are going to try to get in with their forehand, absolutely. But they both have very strong backhands as well. I would say exceptional backhands for players in the top 20 in the world. Beautiful That's a hooking. good start there. Right, and a bit of side spin on it as well from Lee Song Su to send it out of reach. Wang Chunting is comfortable off the table, but he's really going to have to try and stay in closer because as we saw yesterday with Vladi, Lee Song Su's too dangerous when he has time. Even on some of the softer spinny balls, the initiation is going to have to be there. It's going to have to be a dart of a shot, a bullet from Wang Chunting. He had his serve for both of those points and couldn't convert either of them. Lee Song Su breaking serve. Nice change of pace, fast long serve, slightly softer third ball attack. Sometimes unusual when you see the first serve that they've done to be a fast one. Normally they, they, it's, uh, it's short or half long. Yeah, that's right. I heard uh, Jami say 80% of the serves half long at this level. Again, that hooking forehand creating the angles. Now, because Lee Song Su is taking the ball much earlier than Wang Chun Ting, he's able to control the angles better. He's got wider options, and he's using them wisely. Not a point dropped yet for the Korean player. On the receive now. That's just too solid. Not a bad serve at all from Wang Chun Ting. Light no, that spin. Was fantastic, wasn't it? Touch play there, really a hot, strong flick. This stage, any loose ball there, they're in. And once again, the touch. We've talked about the over the table from the flip. Now on the receive, he's able to keep it short to the forehand. Wang Chunting is going to have to find some new strategies here in his receive game. 